Hey fellow tennis nerds, I hope all is well. I got a question about the most popular rackets. Why are they so popular? These rackets you see everywhere. I don't pick many brands for this topic. It's because it's so important to get a strong player to endorse your racket brand. That's really a key driver of racket sales. You need to get your racket in the hands of a strong player. Sometimes by coincidence, they just they use this racket for their whole career. And in some cases you have to pay the money and convince them that this is a good racket for you. Uh, that usually happens when a contract ends. So for example, the Wilson contract runs out, then a few different companies might run after this player and say, hey, why don't you try Babolat? Why don't you try Head? What sells rackets is what people see on TV. You see Novak, he plays with the speed. You see a bunch of players using the blade of various iterations on the WTA and ATP tour. You're gonna find a lot of blades on club level. So if we start with Babola, obviously the Pure Drive, it's an icon in the game. They bought this mold from Prokenix many, many years ago. In the 90s, they were lucky to have Carlos Moya as their ambassador. He used the Soft Drive, which is a racket I also love. Check out my content on tennisner.net and this YouTube channel about the Soft Drive. He used that, but it was painted as a Pure Drive and the Pure Drive sales took off. Rafa Nadal also started using the Pure Drive, but considering his style and uh, the needs of his game, Babolat came up with the Aero Pro Drive. I think the launch was in 2004, and now that is perhaps the best-selling Babolat racket. I would guess so with all the success that Rafa has. And if you look at the Pure Aero, there's so many pro players that use or have used it. ATP, you have, you know, Fonda Sanchul, uh, you had Songa use it, you have Benoit Per. there's so many different players. On the WTA, you have Daniel Collins, Leila Fernandez, and a bunch of other players. So now it's a popular racket. Rafa uses the first edition, I've talked about that endlessly. So the Pure Aero is ultra popular, perhaps the most popular racket in the world, I don't know. Could be the Blade, but it's definitely up there among the ranks. Pure Aero is a racket for spin. It comes with spin grommets so that the strings move more and a more aerodynamic profile for more this windshield wiper and to maximize topspin. Uh, the Pure Drive, on the other hand, is more for power, stiffer, really gonna give you a more penetrating shot, free depth, it's easy to use. The stiffness does come with a cost for some players. If you hit the ball late, if you string it too tight, if you don't have the perfect technique, you might get arm issues. So that is a downside with these stiffer rackets, but the big upside is that they're much easier to use to get bigger serves, more power on your shots, but it's all a balance and you need to tailor your string setup. So that's Babola, both the Aero and the Drive, they're everywhere. They were very good at attracting college players. They approached coaches and got it into US colleges. It's a huge brand in Latin America. They've really done their marketing work to make sure that people get a Babola racket into their hands because if they're around the clubs, Young players, older players, everyone will see the racket and they will say, hey, that's a racket for me. And that's how it grows, kind of grassroots marketing. And Bobolat have been very good with that. And for a while they were really dominant in a certain space of power and spin. Now it's more of a battle. Uh, Yonix have been coming into this um, for as well, uh, along with the other brands, of course. But they're mainly, I would say, four big brands. The big four, not players, but brands. The rest have a very uphill struggle to get sales because these four brands already have so many players, so much marketing investment into the market. People know the brand and if you don't know the brand, you're not going to get a massive sale. So you really need to position your brand properly. Even for up and coming brands like Technifiber, it's going to be tough and it's going to take a long time. It doesn't matter if they have Medvedev and Svontek and Salisbury. And Elise Mertens, these four players that are now at the top rankings, doesn't matter, they need the time and they need to make sure people try Technifiber rackets. It's still a relatively unknown brand outside the tennis nerd sphere. One of the racket models you see everywhere as well is the Wilson Blade. It's not power, it's not spin, it's kind of in the middle but more towards control. So control and feel, that's the Blade. It's one of those models that's been around for a long time and the server is so, it's a great racket. You see it a lot on the ATP Tour. Many use some generation of the blade, David, Go David Goffin, uh, Sitsipas, Tommy Paul, they use blades of different generations. And then you have the Blade Pro, which is called H22 in Pro Stock Code. Hachano, for example, uh, Karenio Busta, Filip Krajinovic all use H22. So, the Blade in some form is a very, very popular racket. Also on the WTA Tour, 
all those many players there actually used the Steam 100 BLX painted to look like the, the blade because they don't sell that model anymore. I would assume and maybe recommend Wilson to get the Steam mold back. Maybe not call it Steam, maybe call it something else, Steam Pro, whatever. They need that power racket back because the Ultra is not really filling that position. The Steam was a very popular racket and it's extremely popular still on ATP and W2A tours. But the Blade, great line of rackets, club players, advanced players, pro players, everyone uses and loves the Blade, it seems. So that's a racket you're gonna see everywhere. When we talk about the Clash, which was Wilson's um, introduction to a more arm-friendly focus, they really wanted to bring something new onto the market. This kind of came with a super impressive marketing campaign and something new, fresh thinking, some innovation going on. And the Clash is seen more and more and more. I see it kind of everywhere I go. Players love to have less elbow problems because that's been a, an issue for many, many tennis players on club level. Uh, but you don't see it on the ATP or WTA Tour. Why? Because it lacks a little bit of control. There's so much movement in the strings that it's hard to know where the ball is going. You get a little bit of a catapult effect. That's my take on it. And I think that's why you don't see it with the pros because they didn't maximum precision. We all know Roger Federer, he sells many, many pro staffs, I'm sure, but it's not really been a breakthrough on the tours. You have Onsi Abor using a pro staff and you have Dimitrov using the Federer mold, as far as I know, but with an 18-17 string pattern. So the pro staff is very popular among club players. You don't see it as often on the, the pro tour, but obviously it's all due to Federer that you see it everywhere. And there are many different versions from the autograph version, which is, which is very heavy to the regular 315 and then light and ultra light. It's so important to have an icon to bring the sales in, which leads us to head and their speed line. The head speed is their most popular line. And uh, Novak Djokovic is one of the key reasons for that. He is selling a lot of rackets, more than Nikolaj Basilashvili, although he's also a very strong player, or Yannick Sinner. Uh, Basilashvili is actually using the gravity extended, but painted to look like a speed. Djokovic uses his own pro stock mold, which I've talked about before in other videos. So search the channel, actually own uh, one of his personal rackets. So the speed, why is it popular? It's because it's kind of in between the blade and the pure drives, pure arrows. It gives you some spin, it gives you some power. This beam is pretty thick, which gives you more power, but it's not all the way to that pure drive, pure arrow thickness. It's kind of 23 millimeter weight is balanced more like towards the blades. So it has that in-between characteristic, which I think many players like. And partly you have the, the strong ambassadors. Coco Goff used to use it, now she's with the boom. They don't have any strong ambassadors, as far as I know, on the WTA Tour anymore, the speed line. But I'm sure they will sign someone for that line. So the speed, very popular for head. They also have the radical, which is going strong. You see that orange racket pretty much everywhere on the ATP Tour, at least. Most of them use older generations of the radical but it's still a very popular line. Along with the gravity, which actually took uh, some ATP players uh, and impressed them quite a lot, like Rublev, Zverev, and uh, Basilashvili, as I mentioned. So uh, there are a few players that actually moved over to the gravity. So that racket has been going strong ever since its release a few years ago. And then you have the extreme with Berrettini and you have the instinct, also decent rackets. When you get to a racket that is very niche, like the Prestige, great legendary frame. As you know, I like it a lot. And you do see it endorsed by many, many players on the tour. Karatsev, for example, Tommy Haas used to endorse it, Marin Cilic. So many players have endorsed the, the Prestige, but it doesn't sell quite as well because it is low powered, difficult to use. And most players want more help from the racket than the Prestige provides. So the target group is small, which is why we're not seeing it as frequently on the club level. Then we go to brand number four, Yonex. Uh, they have one of their big best sellers on the market right now. It's the Yonex E-Zone 98. You see it on the tours, you see it among club players. It's just a good combination of a stiffer, more powerful racket, but in a 98 square inch head, it also has some control and a little bit better maneuverability than most of these 100 square inch rackets. So it, it kind of slots in perfectly for many players. Osaka, Kyrgios, Fuksovic, uh, Bublik, you have Quite a few players using the ESO 98 of some kind of generation. And there's a reason it's popular because it is quite easy to use for this type of racket. So that kind of bridges the gap of the pure drive and the blade as well, but in a different format than the speed. 
So the E-Zone is their big bestseller. The V-Core Pro, it's also a control line like the Prestige, so you won't see it as much. You have Tiafo, you have Hurkacz endorsing it. You have the V-Core Spin line, also not as quite as big of a seller, although Shapovalov has been endorsing it for a long time and using it. The E-Zone is the rock star in the Onyx lineup. Prince, where are they? Well, they don't have many endorsed players. They used to be a, a big brand, uh, but now you see mainly John Isner with an extended Beast 100. Uh, you have Pablo Andujar with his racket, but overall Prince uh, is seen in some countries. You see it in Asia. They, they do sell really well in Asia from what I've heard, but in Europe and possibly in the US now, it's not a mainstream brand anymore. And it's a shame because they used to have some legendary frames like the graphite oversize and so on, but they had financial issues. And when you don't have any players, you're not pushing the marketing, even they have the help and the partnership with Tennis Warehouse, it's still very hard to sell rackets. You need those endorsed players. That's so important for your, your sales. So the other brands, Technifiber, Prince, and then the rest, Volkel, and the other smaller brands, it's tough to compete when you don't have the players. These are the rackets that I see wherever I travel. They just pop up everywhere. I don't see a lot of Dunlops, although they have created some good rackets with the SX and the FX line, but it's not as popular as those, uh, those key brands I mentioned. Still not seeing many Technifiber. Maybe they're bigger in France, maybe they're bigger in other markets. Please let me know. But these are some of the most popular rackets and the reason why they are popular. All of these rackets are good rackets. There's nothing wrong with them. They have certain characteristics that suit certain players, so you need to demo, but they are the most popular rackets for a reason. It's not just marketing, it also has a strong personality and demographic and a decent quality as well. All this racket talk leads me to the sponsor of the podcast, Singles Playbook, how to learn different strategies, plays, serve and one, two, and then you can use it against pushers, how to beat serve and volleyers, how to beat moon bowlers, it's all here. Uh, with some interesting plays and this is all accompanied by videos which you can find on their website so great tool to improve your game well that's all if you want to ask me questions check out my patreon.com slash tennis nerd have a nice day now and don't forget to play some tennis